Hi, I'm Barbara Fox. Uh, the last video I did was about MPLS. Um, for MPLS, we have an IGP running to discover the service provider network. And we set up MPLS LSPs and pseudo wires between nodes. So the external routes or the internet routes are shared using BGP, which is a separate routing instance than the IGP is running. BGP is sharing public internet subnets and locations. And we'll dive deeper into BGP in another video. There's a lot to cover. But today, I'm going to talk about Layer 3 VPNs. So with Layer 2 VPNs, we connect customer locations at Layer 2 using pseudo wires, as if they had a physical Layer 2 link connecting the two sites or multiple sites. The Layer 2 connections have to be configured through the service provider network and the customer locations have to run their own routing protocols to control the traffic and connectivity. Whenever another customer location comes online, you need to set up one or more layer two connections to that site through the service provider network, requiring configuration at all the sites involved. And then the VPN is overlaid on the service pro provider network. So in this case, if we were had a layer two connection, layer two VPN between CE1 and CE2, we'd configure a connect, uh, pseudo wire between these two sites using the PEs. If we wanted to add a third site in, we'd have to configure a connection to CE2. And if we wanted to connect um, through the all three sites together, we'd also have to configure a connection from PE, from extra five to CE1. So anytime a new customer site is added online, you have got to put configuration at all the routers that are uh, supporting the sites and the connections between sites. So layer three VPNs work in a different way. In the same way that BGP, the internet routing protocol, is a different routing instance than the IGP, the service provider's routing protocol, each VPN instance is its own routing instance, meaning it has its own routing table where all routes from that instance are stored. And these are called VRFs, virtual routing forwarding tables. And in this way, companies can use private addresses in their internal networks and share that information using the service provider's network. So each VPN is identified with a route distinguisher. This is a 64-bit number that identifies the subnetworks to be advertised as part of that particular VPN. There is also a route target that has a direction, in, out, or both. And the route target enables the VPN to support different architectures like hub and spoke or VLAN. It also enables in extranet connections and the route targets are advertised as communities with the routes. So in this case, we've got two VPNs. We've got a yellow and a green. And the route distinguisher is identifying the yellow VPN as 100-100. And it's got the same identification at all three of the provider edge routers that support this VPN. We also have the route target. So in this case, we've got uh, multiple route targets with, with direction. So at CE2, we have a route target of 100-100 that's applied in the out direction. So to um, routes that are being advertised into the VPN. And then it's going to accept routes that it receives with a route target of 100, 200 in the indirection. So he's going to be the hub. CE2 is going to be the hub in this VPN. So CE1 has a route target of 100 and 100 in the indirection, meaning he'll accept routes with a 100-100 route target, and it will advertise routes with a 100-200 route target. Mm. And the same for this extranet VPN, 
it accepts 100, 100, and it will advertise with 100, 200. So that means that when CE2's routes are advertised with the 100, 200, they're accepted for CE1. And when CE1's uh, routes are advertised with 100, 200, they're accepted by CE2 and the same for this. So this makes it, makes CE2 the hub and CE1 an extra five, the spokes. So we've used the route target to uh, determine the architecture. In the case of the green VPN, we've got a route distinguisher of 200, 200, and the route target is in the direction of both, and the route target is 200, 200, which means that routes are bidirectional. And if we were to add a third green site here, um, it would, with a route target of, of 200, 200, and a route distinguisher of 200, 200, it would be able to speak to both, it would share routes with both sites. So the VPN information is advertised between the PE routers using BGP. The information is carried in the BGP update messages. If a PE router supports a particular VPN identified by the route distinguisher, it creates a VRF for that VPN. And route targets determine which routes will be forwarded and which will be accepted. So in this case, we're using BGP to advertise the routes between the PE routers. And if they share VPNs, then they store the information in their routing tables. Note that the core nodes in the MPLS network don't have to know anything about these VRFs, these VPNs. Only the provider edge nodes know anything about them. So the provider edge node routers, the PE routers, learn the information by peering with the customer routers using static routes or an IGP or BGP. And the customer routers are peering with the PEs, sharing their IP subnetworks that are supported at this particular location. So it's, it's unlike the layer two VPNs. In this case, the customer, the CE router is peering with the PE router. The PE router associates that location with a particular route distinguisher and the route targets. And then that information is advertised by BGP to the other PE routers. So this makes layer three VPNs much simpler to configure. When a new customer site is added to the VPN, it has to be configured on the PE router to which it's attached. If it's configured with the correct route distinguisher and the route targets, it's automatically added to the VPN by, the, by BGP. You don't have to create layer two connections to the other customer sites. So in this case, if we were to add another green router here, give it the 200-200 route distinguisher and the 200-200 route target with the direction of both. When BGP advertises its information, it will automatically be added into the other PE's VRF tables. So there's no configuration required at any other site. So this is a lot simpler than layer two VPNs. It's also simpler for the network as a whole, because in order to forward the traffic between customer sites, an MPLS connection will be made to the loopback address of the PE router, and a label will be used to get to, will be used to, get to the correct VRF once it gets to that PE router. And at, the P, at that point, the PE router will know how to forward the traffic. So if we're trying to send traffic from uh, PE, from CE3 to CE4, we'll have a, an, an MPLS connection that will go to the loopback address on PE4. And so say we had 128 
as the label that goes to PE4 through the network. All these nodes would just know how to route to the PE4. And then under that, there'll be another label, which will tell it PE4 to use the green VRF to forward the traffic. So that's a quick overview of layer three VPNs. I hope this was helpful. Take care.